Friends, welcome to our homestead. People are quitting homesteading in droves lately, and that cannot happen in today's environment. Today I'm gonna to talk about nine reasons that people usually quit homesteading in hopes that it helps you prepare ahead of time so that you don't quit. Let's talk about it. It's a bit windy out here today and it's about to rain. So let's head into the greenhouse where it's a little bit better to talk. All right, let's jump into it with number one. Homesteading is expensive. At a certain point at the beginning of your homestead journey, you are going to spend a pretty decent amount of money. First, to get your homestead, of course. But more than likely, if you're moving from a home in the city out into the country, that country home is going to cost you less. Now, of course, if you buy a big, huge property, a ranch, it's going to cost you more. But that's something I want to talk about as well, is mindset and downsizing. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. But if you are planning on leaving the city for the country, you need to plan ahead of time. You need to understand and watch videos like this and channels like this and channels like, you know, whomever, Doug and Stacy, anybody like that, and understand what they used at the beginning of their homestead in terms of equipment and what they needed to start. However, you don't need to start big. All you need to do is get out. And the first thing you can do is start a garden and that is not that expensive at all. And it's gonna be life-giving to your family with the amount of food that you'll be growing. But for those who think it's too expensive, let me use an analogy. If you are younger and you live in an apartment and you're about to buy your first house, there are some costs obviously associated with that. And if that house has a lawn that you need to take care of, all of a sudden you need lawn equipment to do that. Or you need some tools to be able to fix things in your house. There, there are costs associated with jumping from apartment to house. Now, there are some costs associated with jumping from house to homestead. So if you know that ahead of time and you can plan for that and maybe acquire some tools slowly over time, then do that. Most people who say it's too expensive jump in headfirst with everything. They buy a tractor, they buy 20 head of cattle, they buy whatever it is and they overwhelm themselves with the things that they don't understand, researching ahead of time and slowly easing into it and understanding what you need in terms of tools, infrastructure, if you can handle large animals, so on and so forth. If all those things weigh on you immediately after you get your homestead, you're gonna quit. Look, there will always be something that you have to buy. The idea of homesteading is to be able to produce almost everything you need on your homestead. But to be able to do that, you're going to need tools and good quality tools to be able to help you forge and fix and uh, craft the things that you need on your homestead so that you can reduce the amount of things that you buy out at the store. And the second thing I'm going to talk about is mindset. That is so crucially important. If you're not putting yourself in the right mindset, in the city while you're still there, in planning to move out into the country, then you might have an issue because you can't take that city mindset out into the country. You may have to let things go or stop watching other things. You know, stop looking at Instagram and all the fancy, cool homesteading pictures that are out there that people pop up. You don't see the rest of their life, right? I'll show you stuff on my Instagram that's both good and bad because that's reality. Now, some of the things that I'm talking about will bleed into the other categories that I'm going to talk about, but everything goes together. And if you don't have everything in harmony, you're gonna quit. In terms of mindset, you're gonna have to prepare your family. So say your kids are used to going to gymnastics three days a week or to football or whatever it is, whatever you do with them, and you move out to a remote homestead that is not available. You need to prepare for that ahead of time. That is not going to be the same. You're not gonna have the same opportunities. You're not gonna have the same opportunities if you go out and have you know, coffee two days a week with your friends and hang out for the morning before you go to work. That's probably not going to exist. Although it could out in the countryside, you just need to prepare your mind for that, that it, that's going to change. Okay, number three, and this one gets a lot of people, and that is 
Having a full-time job and homesteading at the same time might not work. So most of us need to keep our full-time jobs when we first start homesteading. Not many people have the money to just leave and live the rest of their lives. Unless you're retirement age and you had a professional career, most of us still need to keep working. So that's where planning needs to come into play, right? If you still need to work and you jump into homesteading full force right away and you go and grab 10 cows and you start a chicken coop and you've got goats and you've got alpacas that you're gonna you know, shear the wool from and weave your own clothes, that's not going to work at all. While you're working, you have to start slow and easy. You need to transition from one to the other and that transition is not going to be instant, okay? You have to think about what I can handle right at this moment. And if you can't handle that, because you're doing a nine to five, and most people don't do nine to five anymore, it's more like seven to six or seven, and you're getting home and it's dark outside and you still have to take care of the animals and there's nobody else there to do it for you because your spouse works or your kids are young or whatever it is, it's just not gonna work. You gotta start slow. I recommend garden chickens and see how that goes and build up from there. And while you're building up, you can also start to transition into some other type of income. Passive income somehow, start a YouTube channel, you know, sell things on Amazon, Etsy, whatever it is. That is going to be something also that you need to add into the workload if you want to transition to that. If you can't quit your job for say 20 years, whatever it is, you gotta start looking at other avenues to be able to help you live that homestead lifestyle. Okay, number four, failure to plan. I've already talked about that, but it is so important that we don't look at what others have already. Please don't look at my homestead and what I have already, all right? I've been here for seven years and I quit my job to come here and my wife still works today. And don't look at me. Please don't emulate what I'm doing. Do what you can do first and start slowly and build up from there. If you can jump in, Full force, right away, awesome. But you still need a plan. You still need a plan of how you're gonna move from the city to the country. You still need a plan on how you're gonna handle things financially in that transition. You still need a plan on what you're gonna start first. So make sure you're sitting down and thinking about that ahead of time. And that's where number five comes in. Homesteading can destroy your family. If this is being driven by one person in the family and the others reluctantly go along with it, your family has to be in one accord, you know, to use a biblical term. You have to be on the same page. And if you have little kids, it's a little bit easier to convince them to do it. But if you're entrenched in city activities, it's a little hard and that transition's gonna be a little bit longer. If you have teenage kids, it's gonna be even harder to explain to them why you're leaving your city life and going out in the middle of nowhere. Before you move, you have to talk through this with your family. It may take longer for some than others. You have to talk through every aspect of it and all of the implications of what this move means for you and your family or it's not gonna work. And if that doesn't work, it's gonna be extremely stressful for your family and it could break you apart or have your kids, you know, if they're already teenagers, run off and, you know, kind of do their own thing away from the property for a long period of time. Be of one accord, really sit down and have a heartfelt, many discussions, many heartfelt discussions about what this means and why you're doing it. All right, number six is kind of funny. Homesteading is incredibly dirty. And that is just reality and that is something you're going to have to endure. There's a lot of dirt, dust, mud, poop, blood, a lot of different stuff that's around all the time. But you can come up with strategies to keep your home clean. And we've done a pretty good job with that. You know, we've got an area where the kids can come in and change their muddy, dirty clothes. And that is the specific designated area to do so and it's built in a manner which can handle that amount of dirt and shoes are always off in the house, all that kind of stuff, right? We've got a, a dirty kitchen where we wash our vegetables and we hose them off outside first, all of this stuff. There are a lot of strategies to keep your house clean, clean, 
And I mean, it's not like having a maid come to your house two days a week in the city, right? You're gonna have to take care of it. And you're gonna have to factor that in to your homesteading as well. And that transitions me to number seven. And that is homesteading is full time, full time. And it is difficult. So again, this kind of links back to having a job. If homesteading's full time and you've got a full time job, ah, you've got to try to think about a balance and plan to be able to handle both. And this is something that needs to be understood at the very beginning of your homesteading journey. If you are homesteading under the true sense of it and you're trying to produce and grow things for yourself and produce and, you know, build things for yourself or craft things for yourself so that you can pull yourself away from buying things from the store, which won't 100% happen. But if you're trying to do all those things, that is a full, full-time job. Then plus, you know, 12, 15 hours a day type of job. So in terms of family with regard to that, it's all hands on deck. Everybody has to have a job. Everybody has to help out all the time because that's too much for one person to handle if that one person is part of, the, of a family. If you are a loner, which is totally cool, it's a lot easier. But if you're a loner with a full-time job, you can kind of pace yourself and you're gonna have to. And you just don't have the services available to you if something breaks or dies. And that is the next point, number eight. A lot of things break and a lot of things die on a homestead and you have to be prepared for that. Now you can prepare yourself ahead of time before you move out and while you're out there too in learning new skills on how to fix things because there are going to be services that are just not available for you, right? To come out to a remote homestead and work on electrical or do plumbing or you know whatever it may be, re-roof the house. You need to get those skills ingrained within you so you can fix things that break right away. You know, if the toilet's not working, you need to know how to fix that. And on a homestead, things die. Things die all the time and you need to be prepared for that. Whether it's a pet or livestock or your garden even, you know, plants, trees, whatever it is, things you are relying on or things you have affection for, unfortunately, they're gonna die. We've had several cats uh, that are just beautiful, wonderful mousers, but they're also pets. They've uh, not made it and some of those deaths were gruesome and you just need to mentally prepare for that. You know, we've had raccoons kill chickens and that is not a pretty sight. Uh, we had mink growing up in Michigan that would kill chickens and just rip the heads off of them and throw blood everywhere. And that is not a pleasant sight, but it's reality. And it's even more of a reality living out on a homestead. And talking about things that are breaking, I noticed that sitting here in the greenhouse, my watering system stopped working and I heard the timer click on. So I went over to the timer and it's broken. So I'm gonna have to get in here and repair it. I think it's probably clogged up with some sediment and or try to get another filter. If not, I'm hand watering things in here or doing it manually. All right, number nine, the last one is that homesteading is lonely. Well, of course it's gonna be. And most people who are leaving the city to go to the country understand that and they enjoy the solitude. You know, I grew up in the suburbs of Detroit. I lived in the district in Washington, D.C. and walked everywhere because I didn't have a car. And I lived in the hustle and bustle of Houston, Texas. And I enjoyed all of them, but at a certain point, there were just way too many people. And I'm a real people person. I will talk to you for an hour even if I do not know you. But out here, it's more quiet. I can hear myself think. I can commune with God easier. And my family understood that, of course, ahead of time. Now, for social interaction, we're not secluded and we don't, you know, we're not hermits. We don't not talk to anybody. We talk to our neighbors and we have a really active church family. Our church is about maybe 30 miles away, but we're there maybe twice a week and interacting with people all the time. But this is such a beautiful refuge to come back to after interacting with people. Just relax, commune with nature, commune with God in nature, do our work, which is very fulfilling, and it's such a blessing. But if you're the type of person who needs to interact with people all the time, hey, that's cool, 
I love talking to people too. Just understand that if you move out here, you're going to be by yourself much more than you ever have before. So friends, I hope that helps you out in your journey from the city to the country. Now go check out this video right here, which is the video on how we built that table for our greenhouse. Have a beautiful blessed day, and we will see you on the next video. Bye.